Hey, what's up guys? It's Bianca and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be sharing 12 things that I wish I knew before I started SLP graduate school. So if you don't know me, I am a second year bilingual graduate student and I'm about to start my last semester of graduate school. Yay, you got into a program. Okay, so now what? These are some things that you should know before starting your SLP program um, and some things that you can start implementing before you start. Let's get started. Tip number one is that you don't have to be with friends with everybody in the program. As long as you're able to make a good connection with some of the students and that's good. You don't have to be friends with everybody and that's typically the expectation when you start a program and you're in a class full of 24 students. As long as you find a small group of people, then that's okay. That's all you need. You just need a small support group to make it through the two years of graduate school. Tip number two is to be yourself and don't try to be something you're not. Be proud of your ethnicity. Be proud of the languages you speak because we all know that the SLP field is not very diverse. About 94 of the SLPs are, you know, white. And I know this to be true because I'm Latina and I'm one out of the four bilingual students in the program. So just make sure that you're proud of your heritage and your culture. It, even if it's different from the rest of the people in your classroom, just embrace it because that gives you a an advantage and it gives you a different perspective in life and cultural awareness is probably heightened since you do ha come from a different city so i think it's something that you should embrace when you're there tip number three is to take advantage of opportunities to participate in associations or in presentations or conventions and why well this is a good opportunity to showcase what you can do and get experience to present at the speech convention do it it'll look really good on your resume so, if you get the chance, do it. So I know Asha and Tisha are going to be online this year, but just try to participate. It's a great learning experience for students and it'll give you opportunities to expand your network. Tip four is don't beat yourself up. So in the beginning, I, I myself wanted to only get A's in my classes. So now it's beating myself up when I got a B in a project or assignment and honestly that doesn't matter employers are not going to care what gpa you had or your grades in your classroom they don't care as long as you get that degree of course some programs require for you to get a's and b's only and if you get a c you know you're in a probation period so just fall within the min the requirements of the program and don't beat yourself up if you don't get all A's the first year or second year. It's honestly not a big deal. As long as you learn the content and as long as you don't fail classes, you should be good. The thing about graduate school is that you have to be very open-minded and you have to be open to criticism and critique. So just don't beat yourself up when you're given lots of feedback in your lesson plans, in your style of therapy. Just try to be a sponge and absorb all of it. They are doing it with good intentions and they're not just telling you because they want to nitpick and find something that they don't like about you. They are trying to help you be a better clinician. So just make sure that you remember that it's a learning experience and we're not striving for perfection. The first, second year, the first and second year of graduate school. Perfection is at the door. You're just learning. So make sure you constantly remind yourself, I'm learning. This is a learning experience. Right. Tip number five is to find a good work and life balance. And I know it might take a while. You might not achieve it the first year, but find a good balance because mental health is so important especially when you are being bombarded with assignments and content that you need to learn. Make sure that you listen to your body and you listen to what it's telling you. So if you need a break, give yourself a break. 
and don't feel bad if you do some things that are for your self-care if you need time to go running or go to the gym or <laughs> binge watch a show as long as you find a good balance between your self-care work and life balance you should be good and everybody's work and life balance can look different something that worked for me was that i worked really hard during the week monday through thursday and i made sure i knocked down all my graduate school assignments during the week so i can give myself the weekend off and honestly that worked like a charm and yes i was busy during the week but so is my husband so i was treating myself like hey this is my full-time job during the week and i'm gonna put everything that i got during my week given my 40 hours a week so i can have my weekend off and i gave myself time to go out and have fun on the weekends have some girl time go out with my friends um so find something that works for you whether you're knocking down assignments on a sunday um, but just don't leave things for last minute because then that can get very hectic and overwhelming and then you might experience burnout. So try to find a rhythm and a routine that works for you. So if you're a morning person, get your assignments done in the morning. If you are a night person, then get your assignments done in the afternoon. Just allocate time to those assignments and just get them done before the due date don't do them the night before unless if you're like an awesome procrastinator and you're super productive like the day the night before then go for it everybody has a different schedule so do what works for you and don't compare it to your, yourself to other students schedules because that person has a different life than yours so don't compare your schedule with someone else's schedule. Tip number six is to stick to a budget. And this is coming from a student who's ranked up a lot of student loan debt. Stick to a budget and don't overspend. Don't be buying things that are not necessary. Unless if you have the luxury to do so, do it. But you don't need the newest iPad if you can't afford it. If you can't afford the iced coffee, then that's okay. You don't need to do that. Um, just find ways to stick to your budget so you're not ranking a ton of student loan debt once you're done with the program. And I know this can be hard because you wanna go out to eat if you're going to campus or if you're home, you're just wanting to spend money on Amazon, but try your best just to stick to a budget because then the student loans are going to kick in shortly after you graduate or if you manage not to have any student loans good for you that's awesome but just stick to a budget and don't overspend tip number seven advocate for yourself no one else is going to do it so you need to do this for yourself so speak up for yourself so i know this to be true because i myself i am a bilingual student and I wanted a bilingual supervisor during my clinical internship. So I made sure to stick up for myself and ask for a bilingual supervisor so I can get experience. And I knew that if I didn't get the experience in the school, I was afraid that once I go into my CFY year, I was not gonna be as ready or knowledgeable oh, yeah. in bilingual intervention and treatment. So I made sure to speak to my professor and I stood up for myself and said, you know, like, this is what I want to do in the future. I want to provide bilingual services, but I'm afraid I'm not going to be competent. So please like give me a bilingual supervisor. So that's what I mean about advocating for yourself. Advocate for things that you think you should get. You're investing so much in your education. You need to advocate for things that you need academic wise and experience wise and it never hurts to ask questions and ask for help i need to do these things because if you don't ask somebody might not ask somebody might be thinking the same thing it's super beneficial for you to ask questions and ask for help it doesn't hurt to ask tip eight is to learn what you can so every time a professor or a supervisor is giving you either shadow experience or 
they are showing you a video or they're giving you information, make sure you pull out everything that you can from that content because this is the only time you're probably gonna have that one-on-one -on -one interaction or you're gonna be one of the students in the classroom. So take advantage that you're learning what you can right now because once you're out of a program, you're, the only opportunities you're gonna get to learn is in a CEU course. And obviously you have to pay money to attend CEU courses, unless they're free, there's some courses that are free, but this is a time where you need to pull everything you can learn from your professors and from your courses that you're taking. So save the documents, save your PowerPoints, upload them to in OneDrive or the cloud, but save everything that you can just in case if you need to refer back to it later. Tip nine is to get a good planner and it doesn't have to be a high tech planner, just any planner. Even if it's your iPhone, on your iPhone, just get a planner so you can stay organized and on top of your task. You get into the habit of organizing your information, your deadlines, your due dates. And that's a good habit to start off the minute you start graduate school. Because trust me, once you start getting assignments for cases and you're taking four or five classes, it's really hard to keep, keep track of everything. So make sure you write it down and you make sticky notes, you add sticky notes or you set up alerts on your iPhone or iPad. Tip 10 is to apply to graduate student scholarships. I heard this so much from my friends and students in my cohort that they're like, okay, well, I'm not gonna apply because I'm probably not gonna get it. And that's free money that you're just dismissing. So if you have the time, invest in applying for graduate school scholarships. You know, they're difficult to find. I've been searching on scholarships.com and looking for specific scholarships that can help graduate students. There's not that many, but it's worth a shot. And if you can't find any online, ask your professors from your program to see if they have links or if they have websites that offer graduate student scholarships. So it doesn't hurt to ask and it doesn't hurt to apply. I ended up getting a scholarship that I had no idea existed and I was nominated by one of the professors. So that happened. That was money that helped me move forward into the program. And I did apply to other scholarships and I got a denial letter. I didn't get it, but it's worth a try. And don't, don't dismiss it. Don't dismiss a scholarship. You never know if you get it that one year. Tip 11 is to not compare yourself to other students. And trust me, I did this the first year and I kind of had that competitive, I felt that competitive energy coming from other students. But trust me, it's all invisible and it's not even there most of the time. So don't be competitive. Those are your coworker, future coworkers. Um, you can bounce ideas off of each other. It doesn't have to be a competition. You both had different experiences. You both might gain experience from learning from one another. So don't feed into that competitive energy because trust me, you both have lived different lives and each person is unique and you're not going to gain anything from comparing yourself to that person last tip is to celebrate your little wins and especially because you're going into new territory you're treating patients for the first time or if you had experience in the past celebrate the little wins like for example i had a kiddo who i was seeing at a daycare center and it was really hard to get him to engage and participate in class and i was constantly beating myself up i feel like i had i felt like i had failed and I felt like I didn't do enough, but I did and I worked really hard. And one day, you know, he sat and participated in our 30 minute long session and I was so happy. So celebrate your little wins, give yourself a pat on the back because you know what you are struggling with and what you are achieving. So cheer for yourself when you can and give yourself positive feedback when you have small or large accomplishments. 
you are your biggest cheerleader when it comes to being in the program because you only you know what exactly what you're experiencing and what you're thinking. So yay, you made it all the way to the end of the video. And before I let you go, go check out my Instagram page. You're in graduate school now. So if you want to see what it's like to be an SLP graduate student right now, and if you wanna see my journey going into my last semester of graduate school, go check out my Instagram. I am constantly sharing stories and posting on my feed. If you're not following me yet, go follow me and I'll give you a follow back. I am excited to see your journey as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss my next video. Thank you for watching and good luck everybody. Bye.